Welcome to this Learn Coach tutorial on sampling. In this video we're going to cover what actually is a sample, what are the methods of getting samples, and finally sampling and non-sampling errors. So starting off with what is a sample. A sample is a small proportion of the population used to represent the whole population. So here imagine this is a whole population, and that could be a whole population of a country, of a city, of a town, it could be a school, depending on what you're studying. And a sample is a small proportion of this population which is used to represent the whole population. So going over a few definitions now, a target population refers to the whole group of individuals you want to find information about. For example, it might be the whole of New Zealand. A census includes all members of the target population. You might have heard of the New Zealand census, which is a survey that every New Zealander answers. It's called a census because it includes all the members of the target population. Now a sample includes just some members of the target population. For example, if we wanted to do research on teachers in New Zealand, it would be a census population if all the teachers in New Zealand were involved in the project. However, if only a few teachers were involved in the research, it would be a sample population. So now moving on to samples. It's really important for the sample to be representative of the population. So for example, if this was a population here, there are many different types of people, and each type of person makes up 20% of this population. So an unrepresentative sample would be this one here, because it only includes people in the red shirts. That doesn't represent this whole population here. Another example of an unrepresentative sample would be this one here. It's slightly better than the last one, but the proportion of the different types of people in the sample is very different to the proportion in the actual population, so it's not representative. Now this here would be a representative sample, not only does it have all the different types of people, it has the equal proportions of people. Now the different types of people could represent many things. It could represent gender, age, ethnicity, careers, a large number of different things. So it's important that your sample is representative of the population. Otherwise you might get results that don't apply to everyone else. Because if you did a survey with these people here, you might find out results that are applicable to this person, but none of these other people, so it wouldn't be really helpful. So why do we even use samples when we could use a census? Well first off, samples reduce cost. It reduces cost and it reduces workload. It means that researchers can get information about the whole population without having to investigate every single member of that population. So samples are really helpful. It's very important to remember that you can only apply your results from the study to the target populations or populations that are very similar to the target population. Now this comes up a lot in exams and it's important to know what the target population is. So for example, if we conducted a study and surveyed people at a mall in Auckland, you can't apply your findings to people who don't go to the mall or people outside of Auckland. And that's because the only people used in the survey are people in Auckland who are at the specific mall and so other populations might have different characteristics. If this was in the exam, they might ask, what's an issue with applying these findings here to the general population of Auckland? The issue is that the people at the mall in Auckland might have different characteristics to people who aren't at the mall in Auckland. It might be predominantly a different gender, age range, or ethnicity, so you can't apply your findings to the context outside of the mall in Auckland, because people at the mall in Auckland would be an unrepresentative sample of all the people in Auckland. So now let's talk about sampling methods. There are different methods to create these samples to ensure a representative sample. So the first one is random sampling. That's where there's a list of every individual in the population, then there's a random process to select that sample. For example, a random number generator. Another sampling method is cluster sampling. So a population contains subsets which are representative of the whole population. And cluster sampling is using some of these subsets or clusters as samples. So it's quite hard to understand from this definition, so we'll go through a couple examples. If you wanted the target population to be all of the high school students in Auckland, an example of cluster sampling would be picking seven high schools in Auckland as a representation of all the high school students in Auckland. So each high school would be the subset or cluster, and you're picking a certain number of these ones. Another example might be if you were doing it of a town, you might pick three streets in that town to represent the whole town, and you'd use every person on those streets. This is different to stratified sampling. This is where the population is split into subgroups of people with similar characteristics called strata. So we've got these subgroups, and samples of people are taken from each strata or subgroup in proportion to the number that make up the population. So back to our high school students in Auckland, we can imagine that each school is a subgroup or strata. The students all have similar characteristics in that they go to the same school, and they would be exposed to the same teaching. So instead of picking whole schools like cluster sampling, 
you're picking people from every school in proportion to how many people go to that school. So really big high schools in Auckland, you'd pick a higher proportion compared to the really small ones. Again, with our street example, it might be picking some people from every street in a town to represent that town. And the longer streets, you'd have more people represented. It could also be split into ethnicities. The number of people chosen would be representative to how much of a proportion the ethnicity makes up of the whole population. Or even split into genders. So that's stratified sampling. Now finally, systematic sampling. This is where you list every individual in the population, then use a systematic process to select a sample. So you make a rule and you use that to pick what people you choose. So for example, every third person in the phone book. Now if these aren't done correctly and the sample isn't representative of the population, selection bias has occurred. Selection bias might mean that the results aren't accurate. Now finally, moving on to sampling and non-sampling errors. Starting off with sampling errors, samples must be large enough to decrease errors from the process of sampling. Sampling errors occur as a result of the sampling process because the variability between samples can never be completely avoided. If you're only taking a small proportion of the whole population, no matter how good your methods are, there's always going to be some random chance involved. And if you pick one sample using one really good method one day, your results are going to be different than if you use the same method on another day. So there's always going to be sampling errors and that's just due to random chance. But as the sample size increases, sampling errors decrease. If you pick five people randomly one day and five people randomly the next day, they're probably going to be very different people and have very different characteristics. Whereas if you pick two million people one day and then you had another two million people the next day, there's going to be a lot less variability in that sample. And that's just due to the increased sample size. So sampling errors can be minimized by increasing the sample size, but it can't be eliminated completely. And this is very different to non-sampling errors. These results from the way that information is collected from the sample. This can mean that the sample isn't representative of the population, so that causes bias. So an example of this might be, if there's a really low response rate to your survey, then it's unlikely to be representative of your target population. So unlike sampling errors, which is due to random chance, this is due to the way information is collected from the sample. So maybe this survey was really complicated or took a long time or required postage back, so only a small number of people responded. It's probably not going to be representative of the population, again causing bias. Similarly, if people who are hard to reach or don't have a phone aren't included in a study, this would also cause the sample to not be representative of the population, which causes a bias. This has nothing to do with the sample size or chance. This is due to the way that information is collected or not collected in this case. Finally, another example of a non-sampling error would be the wording and or the order of the questions which influence the survey results. So an example of this would be after asking questions about what the negative side effects of smoking are on people, participants are then asked about their own smoking habits, they're probably more likely to lie or downplay how much they smoke. And that's due to the order of the questioning. After just talking about all the negative effects, they're probably not going to want to advertise that they smoke a lot. So increasing the sample size will decrease sampling errors, but it will have no effect on non-sampling errors. So you can see that as the error is up here and the sample size is down here. As the sample size increases, sampling error decreases. And again, remember sampling error is due to chance. Whereas non-sampling error is due to bias and that doesn't change due to the sample size. None of the non-sampling errors we talked about would have been changed if we had a larger sample size. So what you need to know from this video. You need to know what a target population is, and that refers to the group of individuals you want to find information about. You need to know that a census includes all of these individuals, and a sample includes some of these individuals. And you want the sample to be representative of the whole population. You need to identify different sampling methods. So there's random sampling, there's cluster sampling, stratified sampling, and systematic sampling. You need to be able to identify all of these. And finally, you need to know about sampling errors and non-sampling errors. You need to know that sampling errors are due to chance and decrease with increased sample size, and non-sampling errors is due to bias, which arises from the way information is collected, and sample size has no effect on this. So you'll need to be able to identify this in any exam question. And that concludes the video on sampling.